Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on the basics of the mole concept. Now, and before you watch this, make sure you're comfortable with chemical symbols and formulas and uh, how to calculate relative formula mass. If you're not, um, just check out my videos that I've already made on this. So, what's in this video? We're going to look at what we mean by the mole, so the basics of the mole concept. Then we'll look at how we calculate amounts of chemicals in moles, and we'll look at some worked examples as well. Okay, so what is this mole thing? Now, to answer that, it's just worth stepping back and thinking about what you know about units of measurement. So you well know that time uh, is measured in seconds. You know that um, distance uh, is measured in metres. And you might know, for example, that mass is measured in kilograms. So you're familiar with the idea that different types of quantities are measured with different units of measurement. Well, the mole is just the unit of measurement for the amount of chemical substances. What that means is if we've got the same number of moles of two different substances, we've got the same amount of each of those substances. Now, we define the mole like this. So we say that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles of a substance. And we call that number Avogadro's constant. That is something that you'll be expected to remember. That is this number here, six with a lot of zeros after it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. It's that huge big number there. So we, we call it Avogadro's constant or just the mole because it's a lot easier to work with than that huge number. Now, importantly, if the number of moles of two substances is the same, it means that the amount of the chemical is the same because the number of particles is the same. And that's a really key thing in chemistry. In chemistry, we don't really care about how much things weigh, like what their mass is. We just care about numbers of particles because you know it's individual particles that are what reacts with each other. Um, so for example, if we look at these four different substances here, we've got hydrogen, uh, methane, glucose, lead nitrates, We've got very different masses of them, 2 grams, 16 grams, 180 grams, 330 grams. But because they're all one mole, that means we've got the same amount of each one because each of those is the same number of particles of each substance. It's just that one mole of, uh, you know, uh, one mole of hydrogen has a much smaller mass than one mole of lead nitrate because it's a much smaller molecule. But the total number of particles is the same. So it's the same quantity. And that's what this is about here. So... These are all the same amounts of chemical because the number of particles is the same. The mass doesn't matter. Only the number of particles does, and that's what the mole tells us. So how do we calculate amounts in moles? We've got a really straightforward calculation we're going to use, which is that the quantity in moles is equal to the mass of something in grams divided by its relative formula mass. And we can summarise that in symbol form like this, where we say that lowercase n for the number of moles um, is the mass m divided by the relative formula mass mr. Now, this equation works because the amount of particles in a mole was chosen to relate its mass in grams to its mr. So, for example, if we think about oxygen, the mr of oxygen is 16 and the mass of one mole of oxygen is 16 grams. The MR of carbon dioxide is 44, and the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide is 44 grams. So all we're doing to turn the MR into the molar mass is we just put a G on the end. So you know, in this last case, uh, sulfuric acid, it has an MR of 98, and its molar mass is 98 grams. So in all of these cases, that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles of each of those substances. Let's look at some examples of how to calculate these. So our first one is this. So we've got um, calculate the amount in moles present in 51 grams of ammonia, NH3, and it tells you that the MR for ammonia is 17. So let's copy out our values first. So N, we don't know. That's our number of moles. We'll just leave that as a star. Um, but our mass, we do know. The mass is 51 grams. And our MR, we also know that. That is 17. So all we do next is we write out the equation N, and then I'm going to put in brackets NH3 to make sure I'm presenting it really nicely. So N, number of moles of NH3 equals the mass divided by the MR. So let's substitute my values now. So that was 51 grams divided by 
the MR, which was 17. Okay, I don't need to rearrange, but I can do my arithmetic now. Um, so 51 divided by 17 gives me exactly three, and then add in my units, the unit for moles is just mole, like that. Bish bash bosh, there we go, nice and easy. So let's look at a second example, which we're going to calculate the amount in moles present in 24 grams of iron 3 oxide and its MR is 160. So let's start by copying out the values. N equals star, we don't know it. Um, M is the 24 grams, that's our mass. And the MR, the relative formula mass given in the question, is 160. So now we copy out the equation. So I'm going to say N and we're going to put in brackets Fe2O3. We do this because in longer calculations, you might calculate several different numbers of moles and it's easy to lose track. So we just label it like this to make it really clear what we're calculating. Um, so we say mass over MR like that. Um, then we say the mass from the question, we're going to substitute. So the mass in the question was 24 grams um, and the MR from the question was 160. So we do 24 divided by 160 and we don't need to rearrange it. So we just stick it into the calculator. Um, and we come out to 0.15 and then we put our units on the end which is moles and that there is our final answer next example three calculate the amount in moles present in 8.1 kilograms of water um, h2o so we're trying to find the number of moles again um, we've got 8.1 kilograms this time we're going to have to come back to that um, and we've got uh, the mr of water is 18. so let's copy out our values so our number of moles, n, equals star, because we don't know it yet. Then we're going to put our mass equals 8.1 kilograms, but we really need it in grams. So we're going to multiply that by 1,000 to give us 8,100 grams. Um, and then lastly, um, we're going to put in our MR, which in the question was 18. OK, so what next? Let's copy out our equation. So we're going to say N, and remember, we're presenting it really nicely, so we put in brackets H2O, so it's really clear what we're trying to find. Our equation is mass divided by MR. Um, and from the question, our mass was 8,100 grams. We're substituting now, by the way. Um, and equally, our MR was 18. So we've got 8,100 divided by 18. Don't need to rearrange it, so we'll just go straight onto the arithmetic, stick it into a calculator, and that will give us 450. Um, and if we put our units in, remember it is just mole for moles like that, and there is our answer again. So every time we're just copying out the values and we're doing mass divided by relative formula mass, m divided by mr. Okay, so let's look at example four, a bit different this time, because now we're being asked, it says to calculate the mass rather than the quantity in moles of 1.75 moles of hydrogen peroxide which has an MR of um, 34. So let's start by copying out our values again. So we're going to say the number of moles, this time we do know it is 1.75. Okay. However, the mass we don't know, so we're going to leave that as a star because that's what we're calculating. And the MR, we do know that, that is 34. So let's copy out our equation. So we're going to say n equals the mass of h2o2 which we don't know i'm putting that in brackets to remind me that's the thing we're finding um, divided by um, the mr so let's substitute our values in we do know our number of moles it's 1.75 we don't know our mass so we leave it m of h2o2 um, and we do know our mr that's here that's the 34 so we've got 1.75 equals m divided by 34. So we need to rearrange this now. So what we have to do to get the m on its own is we multiply both sides by 34 like this. That means the mass has been divided by 34 and then multiplied by 34. So they cancel out just to leave you with a mass of H2O2. Okay, And then the... Um, the 1.75 also gets multiplied by 34, and so we end up with M of H2O2 equals uh, 59.5 grams if we put that into our calculator and add the units on. So in this one, we had to do that rearrangement before we did the arithmetic uh, and then stick in the units on. Okay, so 
the upper five. Calculate the mass of 0.18 moles of magnesium hydroxide. And oh dear, it doesn't tell us the MR, it just gives us the relative atomic masses. So we're going to calculate the MR ourselves. So let's let's work through and see how we do that. So we start with the values. Uh, number of moles is um, uh, 0.18 moles. Our mass, we don't know. We're going to leave that as a star. And our MR, we don't know either, but we can calculate it from this formula over here. So we're going to have one lot of magnesium plus two lots of oxygen plus two lots of hydrogen. So if we substitute our masses in, we've got one times 24 for magnesium. Then we've got plus two times 16 for O and then two times one for H. And that comes to uh, an MR of 58. So now we can start to move on to our equation. So our equations like this, we're going to say N equals the mass of Mg. OH2 divided by um, our MR. So now we can substitute in. So our number of moles here is 0.18 equals um, our mass, which we still don't know. So I'm just going to write that in. But we do know our MR. We found it down here. That was 58. So that's divided by 58. So again, to re I'm going to need to rearrange this again. So we'll multiply both sides by 58. Um, we're doing the inverse operation of dividing by 58. That cancels the 58s out on the right and leaves us with our M being um, our 0.18 multiplied by 58. And that comes to... 10.44 uh, if we do the arithmetic stick it in the calculator and we add on the units which is grams at the end okay so there we go um, these are all quite difficult calculations but um they come with time i'd encourage you to go back through the ones you've just seen me do and try and have a go at them yourself on pen and paper before you then watch me have another go at them okay so that's it the end as always thank you for listening and well done if you got this far